this morning and giving praise to God together. I think this morning, uh, of all the Sundays we gather and sing together, I think this might be the most important morning to come sing that together. Lord, there is nothing better than you. Amen. Well, here's why I think that this weekend specifically. There's something coming up this week. What is it? I heard some Thanksgivings. That's also coming up. How about right after that? Black Friday. So here's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Starting this week, so before the next time we see you, we're going to start, I know we're a little bit used to it, but for the next like four and a half weeks, every single time you glance across the screen, you are going to be absolutely bombarded with the newest, shiniest, fanciest, brand new, insert your targeted ad, right here, right, <laughs> right? And the whole world, everything you look at is gonna tell you what? This new thing, this is the best thing. And so as we gather here to morning and sing to the Lord, Lord, there is nothing better than you. My hope and my prayer for you this morning is that we can inscribe that on our hearts, that the best thing is Jesus, right? And that we can take that with us so that when we go out, into the world and there is this temptation to feel like the best things or the nicest things or the things that will complete me is something, the temptation is there's, it's something I can buy, it's something I can purchase. If I just get this thing, then Christmas will be perfect or my kids will be so happy or my spouse will be so happy and this will just make everything perfect. Those things aren't gonna solve your problems. So let's continue to worship. We're gonna sing that he's the king of our heart this morning. And if there's a throne inside of your chest, who sits on it? because there's only one that is worthy to take that seat. And we wanna to continue to worship him this morning because he is the best thing and he is good.
sing, Lord, keep us faithful to you, anchored in hope and shared pursuit. But I started to write this song uh, because I had a lot of things in a season that I really wanted to do. And I had a lot of things that were good things, and I would probably go so far to say is, I, I felt like I had good things I wanted to do that were also kingdom things. Uh, but, and also, I, I work with people, <laughs> and so uh, sometimes that's difficult. <laughs> and so there was this season where I feel like I have these good kingdom things that I would go so far to say that the Lord placed on my heart, but in order to do these things, I have to first talk to this person about it. I have to make sure these people are on board. I have to pitch the idea to a couple of different people and everybody's got their two cents and I'm just getting frustrated. And I got to a breaking point where I remember just being by myself and thinking, man, I feel like I could just do this so much better if I was just doing it by myself. And I, <laughs> I remember in that moment, very clearly, very gently, but also firmly, the Lord just saying, Wesley, that's not true. Wesley, the only reason you are where you are right now is because I have put you there. And the only reason you are where you are right now is because I have sent people far before you, years before you, to pave the road on which you walk. And you would be next to nothing without the people that I have put around you at this time and at this place. So if you think that you can do it better by yourself, that's foolishness. So I just wanna be, if nothing else, a reminder as we sing this tonight, that we're better together, that the Lord has created us for community, and what an awesome opportunity we have to come as one church from multiple locations, and not just Life Point Church, but also the Big C Church, because it starts in rooms like this and nights like tonight where we can focus our hearts on the Lord. And instead of saying, here are the things that I feel like God has put on my heart, here are the good things, here are the kingdom things, instead of, instead of giving God my things, ask him, Lord, where is your kingdom going? So I hope that's an encouragement to you tonight. Let's just surrender that to Jesus because we are anchored in one thing and that's not our plans or ideals. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's lift this up together tonight. Lord, keep us faithful to you, anchored in hope and share pursue. Lord, give us courage and boldness in Jesus' name to share of your glory and give you all praise, our God.
of the Lord. We love God's word, and I just wanted to start today by reading some scripture as we continue this morning. This is Romans 8, 15. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. And I need reminded this this morning, and I need reminded this often that my relationship with the Lord is one where he loves me, he is for me. It's not dependent on how I'm doing this morning or how I'm feeling. In fact, the term that Paul uses for adoption, it's a legal term. And so when Paul, when Paul says this, he's, he's telling the early church, hey, if you're in the family of God, you have been legally and permanently adopted. There's nothing that anybody can do or say to take that away from you. And so if you're here this morning, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a follower of Christ, I want to remind you, that's you. And if that is you this morning, we're just going to read this scripture again. Do you mind reading this with me? This is Romans 8, 15. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. So maybe this morning, maybe this morning we need to remind it that our relationship with the Father is one of intimacy and love, that he's not, he's not looking down and waiting for you to mess up. He loves you, and you can call him Father. And, and maybe for some of us, we do feel like we've been messing up quite a bit, quite often. And we keep falling in the same old ruts and the same old routines of sin. And it feels like I'm just not, I'm just not good enough. And the good news of the gospel is that you're not. But God still chooses to call you a member of his family. If you've given your life to Jesus, if you follow him, you're in that family legally and permanently. And there's nothing that anyone can do or say, including yourself, to take that from you. So I just wanna encourage you and invite you to keep that at the forefront of our minds as we continue to worship Jesus this morning. We will sing your 